Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief tutorial on how to flash or reflash a Fawn or Open Mesh router with the Yazaga firmware over at uh, digininja.org slash Yazaga. And we're going to basically show you how to do this if you're reflashing or flashing for the first time using the simplest method, and that is in Windows with the AP51 utility. So let's go ahead and get started. All of the uh, materials that you'll need to download are linked in the article that this should be uh, posted on. Uh, so if you aren't there right now, head over to hack5.org and uh, find the video section there. And what we'll need to do before we even get to the payload file uh, with all of the downloads, all of the uh, uh, files that you're going to need, let's go ahead and set up our connection. So we have our open mesh or fawn router here and we have it directly connected to our computer, in this case a laptop, with an ethernet cable. And uh, we also have, uh, and it's not plugged in right now. Now before we get started we're going to have to make sure that whatever our, our if we have like other uh, network connections here, we're going to want to disable those. So I'm first disabling my wireless and we're going to need to set a static IP address here for the local area connection. So hit properties and under IP version 4 properties and we'll want to set an IP address in the 192.168.1. something range. I'm going to say 100. Um, we're, as long as it's not 1.1 you're all set. Subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 and hit OK. So with that change made we're now ready to go ahead and fire up the software. So find the download and open up the AP51 flash GUI. We're going to check the box for the external file here for the root FS and choose the OpenWRT Atheros root FS file and the Atheros VM Linux. These are uh, all included with the zip and it's these can be downloaded the latest versions over at digininja.org slash Yazaga to get the latest version. Now our interface is already selected as Sun, or I'm sorry, not Sun, as the Atheros PCIe Ethernet controller. This is my Ethernet controller. Um, my wireless doesn't show up here because I disabled it in the previous step. Yours may say, you know, Broadcom, Microsoft, whatever it may be, but uh, make sure you choose your Ethernet controller and go ahead and, and uh, click Go. Now remember, our our pineapple is connected directly to the computer by Ethernet, but it does not have power plugged into it. As soon as we hit go, we're going to plug the power into it. So I click go, I plug the power in, and it's reporting no packet, no packet, and in just a moment, there we go. It's set the packet, we have an IP, it's telling us the MAC address, and it is sending the root file system. This process right here takes about 10 minutes, so we're just going to go ahead and skip ahead in the video. And the flashing is complete. As soon as it finishes, the utility just closes. So if you left to get yourself a cup of coffee, you come back and it's no longer open. Don't worry, it didn't crash. It just finished flashing. And right after that, the unit will go ahead and reboot. So just wait a few minutes and it will come right back up. Uh, if you're not sure, just go ahead and pull up a command prompt and we could say ping it. It is by default going to be on 192.168.1.1. And I see we're getting replies here from it. So now we can move on to the next step and that is setting a root password before we can transfer any of the files or change the configuration we want to set up a root password now I use putty as my telnet client of choice if you're in Windows XP you already have one in the command line but you should go ahead and pick yourself up an SSH client anyway and putty is a pretty good one so I'm gonna specify 192.168.1.1 and I selected telnet here by default it's SSH see port 22 I wanna make sure it's telnet port 23 so I'll open that up and immediately we're connected to a root shell on the uh, on the pineapple here and we need to issue the, the passwd command. It says right here if we issue passwd it will enable SSH. So passwd, we're going to give it a password. And now we are all set. So from here we can go ahead and open another instance of PuTTY. If you hold down shift and click that icon, it'll pull it up again. And again, 192.168.1.1. I'm just going to leave the Telnet window minimized here. Just in case anything goes wrong, I'm still connected to it there. And again, it's SSH port 22 at that address. And I open it up. 
and I say yes and I can log in as root with the password that I just set up. Great. So now we can go ahead and start configuring it and start sending over some of the other packages that we may want. So to do the configuration really there's only one file that we need to change and that is here in uh, slash etc slash config and it's the file wireless. Right? We can see it's right there. Now if you're not familiar with Linux that's okay. I have the command right here for you and you can just copy and paste this from the web page. But basically what this is going to do is send is going to put this information right here into the text file. And this information is saying that it is a Wi-Fi device, the type is a Theros, that's the chipset, it's got an automatic channel and then on the Wi-Fi interface we say it's Wi-Fi 0, that's the name of the interface, it's LAN, it's access point, the SSID, you can change this. I've set mine to pineapple, but you, you can set yours to whatever you'd like. And uh, for now, the encryption is set to none. If you'd like to, say, enable WEP or WPA encryption, we have a guide for those as well. But for now, we're just going to copy this, and I'll come over here in PuTTY, and I'll just paste that right in. And I'm pretty sure I can just uh, right-click and that paste. So the right click button will just go ahead and paste that and now we have changed that configuration file. So next time we restart the router it will have the SSID of Pineapple and be set up just the way we'd like as far as the wireless is concerned. But while we have it here let's go ahead and install any of the other packages that we may fancy. Now the two most common that you would probably like are WebIF and it requires uh, Hersel here or has H-A-S-E-R-L, Hasserl. Right? So you're going to need these two packages if you would like to use the WebIF interface. It's, it's a beautiful web front-end interface. If you're, if you're used to configuring a router with a web uh, interface like a Linksys or a Netgear or a D-Link router, this should be familiar to you. And uh, it just makes things a little bit easier if you're not uh, too adept with the command line stuff. So I, what I'm going to do is to get these two files over here. Uh, I'm going to just copy them with a program called WinSCP. And like before, I'm going to give it the, the IP of 192.168.1.1. We're going to log in as root. Pineapples are yummy is the default password I like to choose. And we're going to set this to SCP. We're going to log in and we'll say yes or update. And these two errors are known. You can just go ahead and click OK. And there we are. We are set up. And over on the right hand side here, what we see is the contents of our pineapple, whereas on the left side here, we see the contents of our hard disk. Now I'm going to move over to my USB drive where I have my files here. And I know that I want Hersel or Hasserl. Just drag that over and hit copy. And I'm going to do the same here with WebIF. And this is the way that you would copy any file. You can see I have a couple others that I like. DSNF, NGREP, NMAP. These are all great uh, packages you can get from openwrt.org for the Kamikaze firmware here. And that will allow you to you know, extend the usefulness of your pineapple. But for right now, we're just going to use these two as an example of getting you set up with that web interface. So we've copied those over and we can come back to our shell here in putty and if I type ls you can see that those files are now there if I type pwd you can see that those files are in slash root that's where they're living and that's because I'm logged in as root that is my home now to install packages you use the command opkg space install space the name of the package. Now since I have two packages here I can type star dot IPK and that installs all of the packages with a dot IPK that's in the current directory that I'm in and I can see it's these two right here Hasserl and WebIF. So I'm going to go ahead and issue that and we can see it's beginning by installing Hasserl and now it is installing WebIF. And when it's done, you will see success. So we are all set to go. Now we've made a bunch of changes. What we would like to do now is restart the pineapple. So just type restart and press enter, or you could alternatively, I'm sorry, it's reboot. Type reboot and press enter. Or alternatively, you could just unplug the power and plug it back in. Now this session 
errored out. This session errored out. They're all closing because it's no longer on. I can see if I go back to my command prompt and ping 192.168.1.1 with attack T, I'm not getting replies from it. And as soon as I do start to get replies from it, I know that it's back up alive and waiting for me to connect to it. I should probably, when I'm done with this, uh, switch back over to a DHCP address for my Ethernet interface. We'll do that at the end. And there we go. We've got replies from 192.168.1.1, the default address of the pineapple. And what this means is I can come over here to my web browser and actually point it at that address. So HTTP colon slash slash 192.168.1.1 and we are prompted for our username and password. Again, that's root. And I like to use pineapples are yummy. And it's redirecting us to the WebIF page, and here we go. And from here, we can make all sorts of changes that we would like to the network or the system or the other configuration here of our little OpenWRT-based uh, pineapple device. Like here under wireless configuration, we can make changes to, say, the SSID or the interfaces or any of the fun stuff that we'd like. It's all right here in the system if you're not so happy using the command prompt. Now, all of the magic of the pineapple, though, is in port 1471. So, again, 192.168.1.1. If we go to port 1471, we're asked to log in again. And the first time we come here, we're going to have to set up our interface. It's currently down. We click Change. And now our interface is up. You may also get a uh, message here saying that the interface is not set up. And you'll click that, and all of this will appear. And Karma is currently off. We are not uh, attacking any victims at the moment. But once we do turn that on, our connected clients will show up down here in this area. And then we'll also get a log here with information on who has connected and say when we uh, use the module system to send some commands to it say if we were to port scan them or other things like that the results would show up here in the right so there you go we've gone ahead from beginning to end and created or reflashed a pineapple if you mess up your settings if you're in webif and, and you change something and, com and everything is completely borked just follow these steps again and you'll be right back to factory defaults and at this point I'm just going to go ahead and change my adapter settings I can bring my wireless back up and I can come back in here and make a change to my IP settings and tell it to use an IP address automatically the setting that I had before we began that's it if you have any questions just go ahead and leave them in the comments